For a film titled Soft and Quiet, it was the complete opposite. It was rough and loud amongst other things. But man, 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 we got some things to talk about with this one. So let's jump into the review, folks, right now. What's going on, folks, and welcome back to the channel today for another review. And today we're going to be reviewing the film Soft and Quiet, which made its world premiere at South by Southwest Film Festival 2022. Now, listen, folks, this film, I, when I was when I was done, I, I needed like 30, 45 minutes to an hour to decompress from this because this one is something like for real. And honestly, if you read the synopsis, it literally does not prepare you for what is to come. Like, I'm legit upset. Like, the film got me really deep in my feelings. And, like, mad, sad, all sorts of different emotions. And I want to say, first off, that I thought by that alone, the, whoever done the synopsis did a fantastic job. Because it's enough to get you in the door. But when you're inside, that door slams behind you and you better be ready for all things to come because it is, it is crazy. It is crazy. Um, but let's talk a little bit about the production before we get about what's happening with the plot. Now, I thought cinematography, I thought instantly was really good. I love the painting shots. Um, and I thought that overall, just the cinematography really like added an element of investment for me because it kind of felt like you were like a extra character within the film. Like you were like a monster group. You were amongst the walk. You were amongst the car ride. Like you were just like another uh, member sitting inside of their, their, their group, which we'll talk about in a second. Uh, and it, again, this really heightened the drama. So like cinematography, I thought was really, really good. You know, like that fly on the wall, almost like a, that GoPro perspective. I thought that was a brilliant decision to go with it in that route. Um, and it wasn't a GoPro, but I'm saying like that idea of feeling like you're right in, in, in the midst of things and not just a camera just off to the side. It almost felt like you were actually in stuff. I mean, then the acting was really good. That's just what it is. The acting's really good because it had to be good in order for you to feel the way I felt afterwards. Like they did a really good job. Um, but with that, Emily, the character, um, her day just kind of starts off with a lot of drama. Like if it ain't one thing, it's the next. Um, but hell, that wasn't just the half of it because as if like things randomly wasn't kind of happening to her or things she was kind of walking into, she literally was just about to get the day started. Like for real, for real. Now, the dialogue in this film is truly going to spark some social commentary and she has this group called the daughters uh arian unity the daughters for arian unity shall i say uh, which is a group of white women expressing their thoughts on racism equality and gender and literally everything that they feel they don't have a fair shot in in terms of society so if you're gonna think this is about to be a productive conversation they had wrong they started off by eating a pie with a swastika swastika on it the nazi symbol by the way um and then when they start to all go around the group of kind of expressing their dislike or distaste for society about how they feel excluded into certain things or they don't feel safe and whatnot one member of the group says that her dad is a member of the KKK. She don't see a problem with that. So, folks, I'm just saying, you need to know by no means should you feel any bit of empathy or sympathy for these characters. They make it very clear that you need to dislike them instantly. And that still wasn't enough. So, you know, uh, here's the thing. With so much building, I kept waiting for this film to hit a point where things were kind of flipped because you see enough negativity coming from these women that you start to wonder when they will get a piece of their own pie. And I just kept waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting because at a point I'm like, there's no way that these women and what they're doing throughout this day, they're just going to get away with it. You know, where's the justice? Where is 
uh, you know, the, the karma, shall I say, and all these things just never happen, which I will get to in a second. And like I said, things are very racially charged. It would just flat out anger you. Just no if ands, or buts about it. Um, and I mean, the lingo, like, I, like, I get it. This is America, so, like, there's no hiding from these things. These things happen and whatnot. And I swear this film looked up the worst racial slurs possible and got an entire list and threw every single one of them inside of the script. Said, make sure everyone's included, because that for sure. And, yeah, these, these women are complete bi bigots and um and karen's if you just want to go with the, the the very simple term going around now um that it's, it's all in there it's all immersed in the film all of these sor sorts of different things and then like much like you know what is being uh slandered as a karen you know they use the privilege for wrong and we see that and because i wanted to check this film out because it was said it was a horror film it's really not horror in terms of it being a slasher or some type of haunted house or whatever. Maybe it's still horror because this is the reality for folks that exist today. And now enters two Asian women who day completely turns to hell. I mean, my heart truly breaks. It makes me very uncomfortable. Um, and like I said, when I was done watching the film, I had to decompress. And I think coming off of the limbs of, you know, to stop Asian hate this film just became so much more triggering to me and I just kept wanting and wanting and wanting these white women to get what they deserve like I really was like look film they're doing all this wrong something needs to happen to them you know because that's just kind of how cinema is you know um, at some point you get the resolve or whatnot. But then at some point in the film, I was just like, you know what? There is no resolve for me. There is no justice. There is no getting over how I feel about this. And, you know, once you get towards the conclusion of this film, um, not only is the lighting really dark and very hard to see, uh, and I guess that is to kind of spark some imagination of your own and whatnot. Not sure. But it's definitely a very heavy, very heavy conclusion of this film. Like, for real, for real. And although there was a part of this film that I cheered, the damage had already been done. So, you know, I wasn't a total fan of the conclusion because I kind of still wanted some justice or some type of resolve, some type of like relief for everything that had happened. But there's really no way you can provide a happy ending in something like this. One, because of just what the film does, but also, two, because this is the reality of society, that these things happen, and you can't sit here and fabricate a, a happy ending when these things don't exist. So, you know, this film was a was really pretty much a glance as to folks who are very racist, who hang around their racist friends, looking to provoke racism and hatred wherever they go. And then on the other end of the coin, you see what it feels like to be um, uh, uh, an Asian, uh, an Asian woman, or a woman and an Asian woman um, in America, and particularly uh, what one random day can really turn into hell for them by any means necessary. You know, and that's just a very sad and heartbreaking thing um, that you know we watch uh, these two Asian women go through out on the film. So. I, you know, I strongly suggest people check out this film. Again, it's going to spark a lot of social commentary, but it is something you need to be prepared. You need to make sure all of your more, your, 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 your emotions and everything, your moral compass all together. It's, it's going to be something to watch. But overall, it's a really, really, really good film, and it will have people talking about it. So, uh, but this is Soft and Quiet, again, making its world premiere at South by Southwest Film Festival this year. Jump in the comments, let me know your thoughts about this film, and as always, stay tuned for more reviews very soon.